this writing hack absolutely blew my mind when I discovered it and it's been a game changer for my editing process. I wanted to share this in a video with you today because I am very excited about this new hack and I'm hoping it will be able to help you too. Hello beautiful people of the internet, how are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today in this video I am going to discuss with you a recent writing tip that I discovered while editing the latest draft of my novel nicknamed Project Mayfair. I will link my writing playlist in the card up above. Is it that side? Or this side? I will link it up there in case you want to go watch my other writing videos. So I am currently working on draft two of my historical mystery novel nicknamed Project Mayfair and over the course of the editing process I have been turning to the internet for tips and tricks since I've never edited a novel before. And this week I read a lot of articles and watched a lot of videos about a concept known as crutch words. In this video I'm going to discuss what are crutch words in writing and how can you identify your crutch words and eliminate them from your story? First, you might be wondering what even is a crutch word? So this term has two different meanings. In speech, just everyday normal speaking patterns, a crutch word is a word or phrase that people say when they're really trying to buy time as they come up with their next thought. For example, a lot of people in my generation use like as their crutch word. They say it when it adds no meaning to the sentence because they're trying to form their next thought in their brain. Other ones could include saying, I don't know, or you know what I mean, or um. Those are all examples of crutch words in everyday speech. They're things that do not enhance your sentence, but you say them without meaning to as you're thinking. Writers also have crutch words, though it has a slightly different definition. Let's just be honest, writing is hard and it's sometimes hard to describe your character's emotions, feelings, or body language. So all authors, whoever they are, have certain crutch words, which are basically words, phrases, or descriptors that they repeatedly fall back on while writing. However, they often don't even realize that they're doing it. For example, maybe your characters have a tendency to sigh or clear their throat or you love to describe how people's eyes dance or their shoulders tense. These could all be crutch words, common words or phrases that you use repeatedly throughout your manuscript when you're struggling to think of something else to say. A lot of times people don't realize that they're doing this. They may not even notice that these words or phrases pop up many times throughout their story. I had never heard of this concept of crutch words before this week and it really intrigued me. I began to wonder, well, what are my crutch words that I use while writing? I saw people in different YouTube videos and online articles talking about how they make lists of their crutch words, which they then go back and reference when they are editing their novel, eliminating some of the crutch words and getting it down to a more reasonable number. It's okay if your characters smile or toss their hair every once in a while, but if they're doing it multiple times in a chapter or like 200 times in the entire manuscript, maybe you need to think of a different way to describe that emotion or just eliminate that description altogether. It's not always necessary. So here is the hack that absolutely blew my mind. On the internet, there are text analyzers where you can copy and paste the body of your manuscript and it will tell you how many times different words or phrases appear in your manuscript. I will link the one that I used in the description and when I saw my results they were game changing. There were certain words or phrases that I'd used 10, 20, 50, sometimes even pushing 100 times in my 92,000 word first draft. And I hadn't realized that I was saying these things so frequently. It really opened my eyes to the different words and phrases that I was falling back on. And now I'm going to use these crutch words I've identified and try to think of ways that I can eliminate or change them to produce a strong manuscript. Now one piece of advice I will give you if you decide to do this for yourself is definitely be mindful. For example, if you say your main character's name 200 times, 
that's fine. You don't need to think of creative descriptors that you can call them instead of their name. Just saying Jack and Jill many, many times is probably better than trying to think of different ways to identify them because that will just take your reader out of the story. Same thing with the words said and asked. People in school always teach us that said is dead and you need to think of more creative dialogue tags. However, I don't think that's true. If you start getting really creative with your dialogue tags, it's going to cause the reader to pause and be like, hmm, that's an interesting word choice. So I think very common words like said, he, she, those are fine. However, I think the more specific a word or phrase, the more Spartan you should be with it. If it is a very evocative or specific image, the reader is probably going to notice if you say it five times across your book. For example, when I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, she used this metaphor that I remember very clearly because at the time I was struck by what a creative comparison it was. She said something along the lines of, words don't come with gift receipts, you can't take them back. When I read that, I thought, hey, that's a really great line. So when I read her other book, Daisy Darker, and she used the exact same line, I noticed right away. This is a really great sentence, but you can really only get away with using it once. I think Alice Feeney probably didn't even notice that she used it twice. She was probably understandably proud of herself for coming up with this and just didn't notice that she'd repeated herself. So I will now tell on myself a little bit. In draft one of my novel, at one point I wanted to describe my main character as swallowing or gulping out of nervousness. However, I wanted to think of a more creative way to say it. So what I wrote was, his Adam's apple bobbed up and down in his throat. I thought this was a really great line. I thought it was a more creative way to describe this. And I thought it was honestly kind of clever of me because Adam's apple, you go bobbing for apples. I thought it was a really great line that I came up with. What I didn't realize until I used this online text analyzer was that I used that phrase or a variation of it four times in the draft. Yeah, I was really proud of myself for coming up with this so much so that without meaning to, I said it four times in one novel. So now I know to go back and, and maybe just use that phrase once. <laughs> Another crutch word of mine that I've identified is I love to describe characters' eyebrows. I didn't realize I was doing this that much, but this week I watched a video by Alexa Dunn. It was an old video, and in the video she mentioned that people who used to write fan fiction have a tendency to describe eyebrows. I used to write fan fiction for many years. I will link in the card the recent video I made where I talked about what fan fiction taught me about writing. So I decided, let me look and see how many times I use the phrase eyebrow or brow in my draft. And I describe a character's eyebrows or brow 46 times. Seven of those were just the phrase, he or she quirked an eyebrow. <laughs> which is probably too many. I had no idea that I was as obsessed with eyebrows, <laughs> so I think it's something I need to be mindful of now and maybe take that 46 down to like 10 or something, because that's a lot of eyebrow movement. Why are former fanfiction writers so obsessed with eyebrows? I don't know, but evidently in my case it's true, because I was describing the eyebrow movements much more often than I realized. So if you out there are a former fanfiction writer, maybe use this text analyzer tool and see how often you describe characters' eyebrows in your story. Once you use this text analyzer tool, you can make a list of words or phrases that appear a little too frequently in your manuscript, and you can be more aware of it going forward, and also think of more creative ways to get the same idea across. You can also go through your book and think, is what this character's eyebrow doing really necessary for the scene, or does the scene read the exact same way without it? I think knowledge is power, so once you learn your crutch words, you can handle them better in the future.
So I hope this writing tip blew your mind as much as it blew mine. I feel like I am forever changed and I am so much more self-aware now that I did this exercise. If you're still here watching, why don't you comment a shocked face emoji down below so that I know this tip was as helpful to you as it was to me. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. My social media links are down below if you want to follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or be my friend on Goodreads. Thank you so much, and I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. Bye, and I'll see you in the next video.